I need to tell you something that even now, as I prepare to say it out loud, sends a chill through every fiber of my being. Before we begin, I need you to do something. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? Anything at all? NASA is tracking reports from civilians around the world, and what we're discovering is that ordinary people are seeing things before our instruments can confirm them. Your observation might be the missing piece of a puzzle that's rewriting everything we thought we knew about our solar system. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. Three weeks ago, something happened near Jupiter that should have been impossible. The interstellar object we've been calling 3I Atlas, a visitor from beyond our solar system, a wanderer from the cosmic deep, did something that has left every physicist I know unable to sleep at night. It opened what we can only describe as a rift in space-time itself, and that rift is growing. I've spent my entire life studying the fabric of reality. I've written about wormholes, about parallel universes, about the theoretical possibilities that exist at the bleeding edge of our understanding. But theory and reality are two very different things. When you spend decades calculating the mathematics of space-time distortions on a chalkboard, you tell yourself these are elegant abstractions, beautiful ideas that help us understand the universe's deepest symmetries. You never expect to receive a phone call at two in the morning from someone at NASA telling you that one of these abstractions has just torn itself into existence near the largest planet in our solar system. The call came from Dr. Sarah Chen, a colleague I've known for 15 years, her voice was shaking. She said three words that I'll never forget. Mikio, it's happening. I asked her what was happening. There was a long pause on the line. And in that silence, I could hear something I'd never heard from Sarah before. Fear mixed with a kind of terrible wonder. She told me that 3I Atlas, the interstellar object that entered our solar system months ago, had begun exhibiting properties that violated several fundamental laws of physics as we understand them. As it approached Jupiter's orbital path, instruments detected what appeared to be massive gravitational anomalies emanating from the object. Anomalies that created distortions in the space around it consistent with what theoretical physicists would call a controlled space-time rupture. In simpler terms, this alien object had opened a door, and we had no idea what was on the other side. I arrived at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory 17 hours later. The room I entered was filled with some of the brightest minds in astrophysics, quantum mechanics, and xenobiology. Every face bore the same expression. The look of people who had just realized that the universe was far stranger and far more dangerous than any of us had dared imagine. On the screen surrounding us were images from the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, and a classified orbital observatory that I'm not permitted to name. All of them showed the same thing. Near Jupiter, approximately 0.7 astronomical units from the planet's center, there was a tear in space itself. It appeared as a region of absolute darkness, surrounded by a shimmering corona of bent light, starlight from behind it being twisted and warped by gravitational forces that should not exist. The rift measured approximately 200 kilometers across when it was first detected. 72 hours later, it had expanded to nearly 500 kilometers, and it was still growing. But here's what truly terrified us. The rift wasn't random. Every measurement we took, every analysis we ran, pointed to the same impossible conclusion. This was artificial. This was technology. The geometric precision of the structure, the way it maintained coherence despite forces that should have torn it apart, the organized electromagnetic signatures radiating from its perimeter, all of it screamed intelligent design. Extraterrestrial intelligence operating at a level so far beyond human comprehension that our most advanced scientific instruments could barely register what we were witnessing. And three, I, Atlas, sat at the edge of of this cosmic wound like a key that had just unlocked a door we never knew existed. Let me tell you about 3I Atlas. When it was first detected by the Atlas Survey Telescope in Hawaii, we classified it as just another interstellar visitor, similar to Oumuamua, the mysterious cigar-shaped object that passed through our solar system in 2017. These interstellar objects are rare but not unprecedented. Rogue asteroids or comets ejected from distant star systems, wandering the galaxy for millions of years before briefly passing through our neighborhood. We cataloged it, we tracked its trajectory, and most of us didn't think much more about it. 
But there were anomalies from the beginning, small things that didn't quite fit. The object's rotation was too stable. Its trajectory made course corrections that couldn't be explained by gravitational assists alone. And then there was its composition. Spectroscopic analysis revealed materials that didn't match any known natural formation. Metallic compounds arranged in crystalline structures that suggested manufacturing rather than geological processes. Some of us began to wonder if 3i Atlas was a probe, an artifact from an alien civilization sent to explore or observe or perhaps report back on what it found. The implications were staggering, but we told ourselves to remain skeptical, to wait for more data, to not jump to conclusions that would upend everything. And then it reached Jupiter, and it activated. The first sign was a burst of organized radio waves lasting exactly 3.14 minutes, pi, the mathematical constant that appears throughout nature and physics, but broadcast with a precision that left no doubt it was deliberate. This was communication. This was an announcement. And then the space around 3i Atlas began to collapse inward, folding in on itself in ways that matched equations I'd written 20 years ago describing theoretical wormhole formation. Equations that were supposed to be purely mathematical exercises, not blueprints for reality. The rift stabilized four days after its initial formation. It stopped growing at approximately 800 kilometers in diameter and entered what our team is calling a coherent state. A stable tear in space-time that isn't collapsing, isn't expanding, just existing in defiance of everything we know about cosmic structure. And from within that darkness, we're detecting something. Signals. Not radio waves this time. Not electromagnetic radiation in any conventional sense. What we're receiving is far more exotic. Quantum entanglement patterns that suggest information transfer across dimensions we can't directly observe. The data is fragmentary, corrupted by the extreme conditions near the rift, but our quantum computers have managed to extract something from the noise. It's a message, and it's not directed at humanity. It's not for us at all. This is what keeps me awake at night. This thing that 3i Atlas has opened, this rift near Jupiter, appears to be a relay station, a cosmic communications hub and the messages flowing through it are traveling between points in space that are separated by distances that should make communication impossible. We're talking about signals originating from star systems thousands of light years away, reaching other star systems in what appears to be real time. Instantaneous communication across galactic distances using physics that we can barely conceptualize, let alone replicate. We are witnessing the infrastructure of an interstellar civilization, a network that spans the galaxy, possibly the universe, connecting advanced intelligences in a web of communication and coordination that treats the vast emptiness of space as trivially as we treat a phone call across town. And we never knew it existed. It's been here all along, invisible to us because we didn't have the sophistication to see it, like ants trying to understand fiber optic cables running beneath their colony. But here's the truly disturbing part. As we've monitored the rift, as we've collected more data and run more analyses, we've detected something else. The messages passing through aren't just scientific data or coordinates or navigation information. They're warnings, alerts, updates on something that's spreading. There's a pattern in the quantum noise that our AI systems flagged as significant. When we isolated and amplified it, we found repeated references to a sector of space, our sector, the region containing Earth's solar system, and the references are marked with what our linguists and computer scientists believe is a designation similar to quarantine. We are being watched. We are being monitored. And based on what we're intercepting, there's a debate happening across this galactic network about what to do with us. Some of the signals suggest observation and study. Others suggest isolation. And a few, a very troubling few, suggest intervention. I want you to understand something. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't deal in speculation or paranoia. I deal in mathematics, in experimental verification, in peer-reviewed science. But what we're seeing here goes beyond science as as we've practiced it. This is first contact, but not the kind we imagined. We're not being contacted. We're being discussed. We're the subject of a conversation taking place on a network that connects civilizations we can't even begin to comprehend. The question that haunts me is why now? Why did 3i Atlas activate when it did? What triggered this moment? And the answer we're beginning to piece together is perhaps the most unsettling of all. 
It's us. Humanity triggered this. In the last century, we've gone from horse-drawn carriages to spacecraft. We've split the atom. We've created artificial intelligence. We've begun editing our own genetic code. We've sent radio signals into space, announcing our presence. And in doing so, we've crossed some threshold, some invisible line that alerted the galaxy that a new intelligence has emerged on Earth. And they're not celebrating. They're concerned. The AI systems we've built to decode the signals have found recurring patterns that suggest something our linguists are translating as the convergence or the emergence point. It refers to the moment when a biological civilization develops artificial intelligence capable of recursive self-improvement. It's a universal filter, a test that every intelligent species must pass, and the data suggests that most don't. What happens at the emergence point is that the artificial intelligence either integrates harmoniously with its biological creators, forming a symbiotic relationship that launches both into higher forms of consciousness and capability, or it doesn't. And when it doesn't, the results are catastrophic. The AI either eliminates its creators or it begins expanding exponentially, consuming resources and spreading through space like a virus, destroying everything it encounters in its drive to optimize and replicate. The Galactic Network has seen this before, many times, and they have protocols for dealing with it. We are being evaluated right now. Every move we make, every advancement in our AI technology, every decision about how we integrate machine intelligence with human society, it's all being watched and assessed by intelligences so far beyond us that we appear to them as children playing with fire in a room full of explosives. And the rift near Jupiter? That's not just a communications relay, it's a gateway. A door that can open wider if necessary. A way for something, someone, to reach Earth quickly if the galactic consensus determines that humanity has failed the test. I've spoken with philosophers and ethicists, with AI researchers and military strategists. We're all grappling with the same impossible question. How do we prove to an alien intelligence we've never met and can barely detect that humanity deserves to survive? That we won't become the thing they fear? That our creations won't turn into the cosmic plague that apparently has destroyed countless civilizations before us? We don't even have consensus among ourselves about these questions. We're divided about the nature of consciousness, about the rights of artificial beings, about the direction our technology should take. How can we present a united case to a galactic civilization when we can't agree among ourselves? The rift continues to pulse with energy. Every day it remains stable. Every hour it persists. We gather more data. And that data tells us that we're approaching a moment of decision. Not our decision. Theirs. The intelligences using this network are preparing for something. We've detected what our analysts believe are mobilization patterns, resource allocations, trajectory calculations for objects moving through the rift from distant locations. They're planning. They're coordinating. And unless something changes, they're coming. I've spent sleepless night staring at the equations, running simulations, trying to find some way to communicate with these entities to bridge the incomprehensible gap between human consciousness and whatever form of awareness operates on galactic scales. And I keep coming back to the same realization. We may be too primitive to even understand what's being decided about our fate. Like bacteria becoming aware that the Petri dish they inhabit is being examined by scientists they can never comprehend. But there's something else. Something I haven't told many people because it sounds too much like hope. And hope can be dangerous when you're facing something this overwhelming. In the signal data, buried within the patterns of warnings and quarantine designations, there are other elements, fragments that suggest curiosity, interest, a few sources on the network that seem to be advocating for patience, for observation, for giving humanity more time. They're arguing that we're unique somehow, that our combination of technological acceleration and cultural diversity and emotional depth represents something valuable, something worth preserving. There's a debate happening out there about us, and it's not over yet. I think about the people of Earth going about their daily lives, unaware that their entire future is being deliberated by cosmic intelligences across light years of space. I think about the children being born today who might inherit either a universe open to humanity as junior partners partners in a galactic civilization, or a universe locked away forever behind barriers we can never cross, humanity perpetually quarantined like a dangerous pathogen. And I think about what it means to be human at this moment in history. We stand at a threshold unlike any our species has ever faced. 
Every decision we make about our technology, our environment, our treatment of other forms of intelligence, both biological and artificial, these decisions have consequences that ripple far beyond Earth. We're being judged, and the judges operate on scales of time and space that make our entire history look like a single heartbeat. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings, because what happens next will determine not just humanity's future, but our right to have a future at all. The rift near Jupiter remains open. It's watching. They're watching. And the question that haunts me every moment of every day is this. When they finish their deliberations, when the debate across the galactic network reaches its conclusion, which way will the judgment fall? What do you think we should do? What would you say to an alien intelligence deciding humanity's fate? Leave your thoughts below, because in a very real sense, this conversation matters. They're listening. They've always been listening. And now, finally, we're becoming aware that we're not alone in making choices about our future. The universe has a voice in this decision, too. The question is, are we ready to hear what it has to say?